Hello all, welcome to the 8th session of the SED series. In this episode, we are going to do some practice questions. So let's get started with our first question. So what it says is that if n is less than minus 1 and greater than minus 2, what is the value of 7 plus half n rounded off to the nearest whole number, right? Now, before we get started, we need to understand that what are the operations which we can do with inequalities, right? So we can add the same number on each of the sides of the inequalities. We can subtract the same number on each of the sides of the inequalities. We can also multiply or divide by the same number on each side of the inequalities. Okay, we can do all these operations. The only thing which you need to keep in mind is that if we divide or multiply with a negative number, then the sign of the inequality flips. Okay. So uh, having said that, let's get going here. So we are here and we have to find the value of seven plus half n, right? So to reach to this place, the first thing which comes to mind is that let's multiply this inequality by half, right? So when we do that, we get minus two times half is less than n times half is less than minus one times half, right? Uh, this 2 and 2 get cancelled, so we get minus 1 less than half n less than minus half. Correct? So we are partially done, right? We have been able to reach half n, but they are asking for the value of 7 plus half n. So let's add 7 on all the sides. So minus 1 plus 7 is less than half n plus 7 is less than minus half plus seven, right? So if we note, we have reached where we want it to be. We want to find the value of seven plus half n, so this is seven plus half n. Let's see, minus one plus seven is six. So six is less than seven plus half n is less than 6.5. Seven minus half is like 6.5. So essentially this value of seven plus half n is going to toggle between six and 6.5, right? It will always be less than 6.5, but greater than six. So when we will round it off to the nearest whole number, it will always come down to six. So the answer to this would be six. Make sense? Just to quickly reiterate, right? What we have done is that we multiplied this inequality by half on all the sides. We got half n. And then we added 7 to the entire inequality to reach to 7 plus half n. And we got 7 plus half n is greater than 6, is less than 6.5. So whenever we will round it off, it will always come down to 6. So 6 is the answer. Let's move on to our second question here. So average of set of n numbers is 19. Array of the 6 greatest numbers is 29. And average of the remaining numbers is equal to 7. Right. So this is the given information and we have to find the value of n, correct? Now, we know that average of a set of a data points is nothing but the sum of the data points divided by the number of data points, right? That's the definition of average. The sum of the number of data points or sum of the number of points divided by the number of points. Okay, so here in this question, we have been given that there is a set of n numbers and the average is 19, correct? So it means that we can write 19 is equal to, let's say that we don't know the sum of those n numbers, but let's say we denote it by s. So it will be s divided by n, correct? Because it's given that the number of uh, the number of count, the count of numbers is n. So we can write this, right? So 19 is the average of all the n numbers. And let's say if s is the total of all the n numbers, then 19 is equal to s over n, correct? With the same logic, we can also write uh, that 29 is equal to, let's say that the sum of the greatest numbers is given by t, so t over 6, 
right? So 29 is the average of the six greatest numbers, right? We don't know the total of those six greatest numbers, but let's say that we denote it by the variable t. So we can write 29 is equal to t over six. So this is only for the six greatest numbers, right? And this one was for the entire set of n numbers, okay? Let's do the same thing for the third, third piece of information, right? So the average of the remaining numbers is seven, right? So seven is the average, and <clears throat> the total of uh, the remaining numbers would be s minus t, right? The sum of all the n numbers minus the sum of the greatest six numbers, right? That would be the sum of the remaining numbers. So s is equal to, seven is equal to s minus t divide by n minus six. Right? Because out of the total n numbers, <clears throat> the six greatest numbers are gone, so the re remaining numbers are only n minus six. So the average is equal to the total of those remaining numbers, which is going to be s minus t divided by n minus six, right? So we're just using the same definition of average in all these three things. We have this value of s in terms of n, we also have t in terms of the number. We can just plug in here, and form the equation in n and solve for it. Let's see what we mean by that. So, basically what we are saying is that s minus t is equal to seven times n minus six, right? We're just doing the cross multiplication here. And s is nothing but 19n, so 19n minus 29 times 6, which is t, is equal to 7 times n minus 6, okay? 19n minus 174 is equal to 7n minus 42, right? You bring all the n to one side, so we're getting 19n, you bring 7n to this side, you bring 174 to the right side, minus 7n is equal to 174 minus 42. This is nothing but 12n, and this is nothing but 132. 174 minus 42 is 132, and you divide by 12 on both the sides, and we get n is equal to 11. Okay, so just to re reiterate, what we did was that we just used the definition of average, which is nothing but the total sum divided by the number of data points. We used the definition for all the given information, and we were able to write an equation in terms of n and solve for it. If two to the power of x is five, find the value of two to the power of x plus two to the power of two x plus two to the power of three x, right? Now, typically what, we, what I've seen is that when we see this, the first reaction here is to add the powers, right? But we need to understand that the powers get added only we are multiplying the same base, right? So if we are doing something like two to the power of x times two to the power of two y, we are multiplying two terms with the same base. In that case, these powers get added. So this is equal to two to the power of x plus two y. Correct? But that's not the case here. We're not multiplying these terms. These terms are being added, right? So let's see how do we approach this. So two to the power of x is already given to us as five, right? So this term is already five, right? What about this term? This term, if you see, we can write it like this because we know when a term is having a power to the power, the powers get multiplied. So we can actually write two to the power of two x as two to the power of x whole to the power of two. And the reason why we're doing it is that because we know the value of this guy, right? So two to the power of x is five. So this becomes five square, which is equal to 25, right? The same thing we're going to do here. We can write it as two to the power of x to the power of three. We are trying to write 
each of the terms in this way because we can use the value, right? So 2 to the power of x is 5, so this becomes 5 to the power of 3, which is like 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. So essentially, if you see this question is nothing but 5 plus 25 plus 125, which is equal to 155. Right? So just to reiterate, we cannot add the powers here because the terms are not being multiplied. Right? The terms are being added. Right? That's the only catch here. Okay, so let's move to our fourth question. Uh, 3 to the power of a plus b times 3 to the power of a minus b, everything divided by 3 to the power of 2a plus 1, and we have to find the value of this expression. Right? So in the previous question, we just saw or we discussed that when the two terms having the same base are being multiplied, the powers get added, right? So here in this case, these, these are the two terms and each of them has the base of three. So we can add the powers. So our numerator essentially becomes a plus b, this power plus this power, plus a minus b, right? Divided by three to the power of two a plus one. Here b and uh, minus b get cancelled, so we get 3 to the power of 2a divided by 3 to the power of 2a plus 1, right? Now, again, we can move this power up uh, and change the sign, or we can move this term down and change the sign, right? We, we know that whenever we are um, doing the reciprocal of a term, right, the, the sign of the exponent of the power gets changed. If it's negative, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. So we can do it in either which way. Let's say that we decided to move this up, this denominator up. So we have 3 to the power of 2a, which was already there, and this guy goes up, so the power, the entire power, the sign changes. So this becomes minus of 2a plus 1, correct? Now, we have got a situation wherein we have two terms with the same base, so again the powers can get added, right? So this will be 3 to the power of 2a plus of this power, which is minus 2a minus 1, because there's a minus sign, so when you expand it, it will become minus, and that will also become minus. 2a and 2a get cancelled out, eventually leading to 3 to the power of minus 1, or 1 over 3, right? Just to quickly reiterate, we added the powers because we are multiplying two terms with the same base. When we multiply the, when we add these powers, we get cancelled. We get three to the power of two a. Uh, we get the same base again. We move this guy up. We could have done the other way around. We could have moved this guy here. Still, we would have got the same answer, one over three. Okay, let's move on to the next question here. So, if two point one times ten to the power of minus three times two times ten to the power of five everything divided by 7 times 10 to the power of minus 4 is equal to 6 times 10 to the power of n, we have to find the value of n, correct? Now, if we look at uh, the question, right, off the bat, you know, we can see that these two powers will get added. It's, it's all multiplication, by the way. They have just put the parenthesis here, but this is all multiplication here. So, we can rewrite the numerator as 2.1 times 2, just keeping the numbers together, and then minus 3 plus 5, because these powers of these two will get added, so it will become 10 to the power of 2. 10 to the power of 2, minus 3 plus 5 is 2, right? Divided by 7 times 10 to the power of minus 4, correct? Now, clearly, we can move this guy up, because we don't want to deal with negative exponents. We want to keep our exponents positive as much as possible. So we'll move this guy up, so it will be 2.1 times 2 times 10 to the power of 2. Then we do the reciprocal of a term with the exponent, the, the sign changes, so this minus 4 becomes plus 4, right? Divided by 7. Now again, these two powers will get added because we are multiplying two terms with the same base. So 2 plus 4 is 6. So this becomes this here, correct? Now 2.1 times 2 is 4.2. So 4.2 times 10 to the power of 6 divided by 7. 
we know 7 times 6 is 42, so essentially 4.2 divided by 7 is nothing but 0 0.6, correct? So we get 0 0.6 times 10 to the power of 6. Now if we see the right side, they have talked in terms of 6, so you know we can match in the same way and we can use one of the zeros for 0 0.6 and write it as 6 times 10 to the power of 5. This is what exactly they have given on the right side. It means that the value of n is 5. Okay, so let's do one last question here. Uh, if x, x squared plus y squared is equal to 10 and xy is equal to minus 3, we have to find the value of x minus y whole squared, correct? So let's start from what we have to find. We have to find x minus y whole squared. Now, x minus y whole squared is nothing but x squared plus y squared minus 2xy, correct? Uh, I'm just using this formula, a plus b whole square, correct? Is a square plus b square plus 2ab. Now this formula, let's keep in mind, also works when this guy is negative. I mean, b can be negative, a can be negative, or both can be negative, but this formula will, will still apply. So the square of the first term plus the square of the second term plus 2 times the product of the two terms. Right? So these two terms are always going to be positive because they are squares, and this third term will be negative if any one of them is negative because the product will be negative, and that's what is happening here. The square of the first term plus the square of the second term plus twice the product of two terms. The product of two terms is minus xy times 2 is minus 2xy. Right? So if we see really, I mean, this is, they have given us the value of this as well. They have given us the value of xy as well. We can just put in those values here. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 10, right, minus 2. And the value of xy is given as minus 3. So 10 plus 6, minus 2 times minus 3 is 6. 10 plus 6 is 16. So the value of this expression is 16. Again, very quickly, we expanded this. And then we used the values which they've given to us. Yeah, folks, hopefully you liked the video and you found the examples uh, meaningful and useful. Keep practicing. And in case you have any questions, please, please feel free to reach out to us at info.mathletes at gmail.com. See you in the next session.